My name is uh, Makado Sintumule Ramaburana. I am the grandson of Chief Makado Ramaburana. I grew up in a Christian family. Both my father and my mother, they are pastors. I went to the Bible college. I studied theology because I had this passion of preaching the word of God. It was not about fame during that time. It, it has nothing to do about, about what we see today. It was fulfilling the calling within your heart. You, you, you felt fulfilled when you do what you were born to do. When I was doing my third year, and something in my heart just said, you need to start a church in Pretoria. In Pretoria, I was doing my third year. Remember that my theological training was done in Soshanguve under the Apostolic Faith Mission. That's where I did my three years of training. So on the third year, I felt this desire of planting a church in Pretoria. Yes, at a very young age, I was not married and I had this faith that I'm gonna start a church in Pretoria in CBD. During that time, I, I, I had personal pressure where I thought that by preaching, I will fill the chairs. You know, sometimes you rely too much on your own gift. You think that because you, you are good in talking or you are good in, in, in preaching, that if you preach, every chair in your chair will, will be filled with people. It was not that because there were empty chairs and that's where the problem came when i started to see other ministry they, they've got their own overflow every sunday it's overflow people are coming in great numbers but here we are doing what i thought was right what the bible college taught they say you need to fast you need to live a holy life you need to make sure that you are focused those were all the recipe that i did but when i look at the result it was not what i expected and guess what I started to decide and say, you know what, let me invite these people because in ministry, it, it is like a, a, a soccer league. There is those that are under and there's those who are above and those, those who are high. So I realized that I was the under, you know, I was on that entrance league where nobody knows you, no matter how powerful or how much you fast, how much you bring revelation, they just said, oh, who are you? Where do you come from? So I started trying to associate with those who've got a name in the ministry. I started to, to be their friends. I started to buy into friendship. You know, sometimes it's very costly because you need to buy into their friendship. You need to do certain things for these people so that you can be in their standard. And when I was there, I tried to invite them in the church and they came. And you know, these people, when they come, they've got crowds. For the first time, I saw the church growing. In attendance remember when we talk about church growth we don't talk about number but we speak of spiritual maturity that is the element of church growth but during that time I thought that the number they represent the church growth during that time you know I was struggling because I, I, I had this spirit of competition you know sometimes you allow the enemy to enter you you want to be the man of the place you want to be the man of the zone you want everybody to talk about you that is where pride came into my it sneaked in and I was not aware I wanted to be bigger than what God has called me for I started befriending these other uh, people most of my friends were were from outside South Africa I was I was closer to Nigerians you know these Nigerians uh, uh, when I was closer to them and because I saw what they, they, they symbolized, it, it was success in ministry. They were driving big cars and they had this sense of authority. Their churches were big and some of them, they've got big titles. So I thought that by associating with them, it would also lift me up. And I remember the other day when I spoke to this other prophet, I said, man of God, I really want the power that you have. I need the anointing. You know, from the Bible college, you think of Elijah and Elisha, that if you serve this one, if you polish their shoes, if you wash their car, if you carry their Bible, what they have will come upon you. This is what I did. I was closer to them. But one thing I discovered, this is what destroyed me by that time. It was their lifestyle when you come closer to them. It's full of sin. I'm going to say it again. Most of these powerful prophets, powerful pastors, when you come closer to them, you know from a distance they look nice, 
they look holy they they are respected but when i came closer to them that is why i started to adopt this kind of their lifestyle they they, they used to drink that is was their lifestyle they used to have uh, uh, adultery a lot of girlfriends uh, I mean, here is a person, a lot of girlfriends, yet when they stand on the pulpit, they preach fire down. I don't know what kind of fire is that, but people will scream, everybody will feel the anointing. And, but when you get closer to them, you realize, you know, these people really, they are not saving the God that we serve. I was closer to them. They told me that for you to, to have what we have, we must take you to Nigeria. By that time, I had adopted their lifestyle. Yes, I was married. I want to thank God for my wife who has been supportive over through all these years. If she was somebody else, I could have been standing here as a divorced person or as a single father. But because of she believed in the gift in me and she believed that what I went through was a process in training, she stood the test of time. By that time, I had a lot of girlfriends. Yes, I was a pastor. We, we moved around. The lifestyle was not good. I, I brought shame into my father's house. I brought shame into my family. This is what was happening and that time I did not want anything to, to, to put me or to align me back into living right with God and it does not end there and that's where I decided let me go to Nigeria and I remember very well before we traveled to Nigeria they they gave me certain soap and say when you go to church you use this it was a black soap inside a plastic it was very smelly and they said you should bath with it on Saturday 12 o'clock Saturday midnight 12 o'clock you should take a bowel fill it with water and get there and you bath when you bath with the stove they said I should start on top of my head that is where they said my destiny is and as I took the soap bathed with it rub it on my skull rub it on my head and I would confess or I will speak things that I wanted to see and guess what as a young person who's hungry for power one thing that I kept on repeating, I want people to fall. I want people to fall. I want people to fall. This was what I thought symbolized the power in ministry. You know, I, I prayed and said, I want when I touch people to, to fall down, when I blow out, people must fall down and roll. Those were, were the kind of powers that made me to seek occultic power so that I, 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 I can use them in the house of the Lord. And the following morning, I went to church. When I went to church, after I've used that ritual, I got inside church. And you know, during that time, when you get inside church, you get very late. You don't start with the worship. You don't, you don't start with intercession because you are not part of them spiritually. Once you, you become part of the occultic, you, you don't connect with the body of Christ because there are certain rules that they tell you that you need to come when it's your time to ascend the pulpit because that is when you come with your force. So you don't have to come and start with the service during the beginning of the service. And I came, they were singing this song and as they were singing the song and I parked the car, you know, when they parked the car, everybody get excited and said, the pastor is here. And when I walked inside the hall, they clapped their hands. They did not know that I have used the black soap. They looked at me as the man of God, but they did not know that as I passed there, I was followed by evil spirits. I stood on the pulpit and I took on the microphone and I started to pray. And I started to say, touch them, touch them. You know what happened? Immediately I said, touch them. I said, Ashas, Ashas, where are you? You know, you, you create that vibe. I said, Ashas, Ashas, move around, Ashas. I'm telling you, within two minutes, I started to hear people screaming. Others were falling. In my heart, I said, yeah, this black soap is working. So sometimes when we see all these things that are happening in our churches, in the body of Christ, sometimes we think it is the power of God. But I want to tell you as you are listening to this testimony that what I have went through did not symbolize the power of God. Then from then I saw that it was working. They also gave me some oils to use. You know the oil that you open and you talk anything that you want. Those were the kind of things that I used before I went to Nigeria. And the time came so that I can travel to Nigeria. I took all my savings because I had to pay for also the, the one who was taking me there. Because this is the pastor who come from there 
and uh, he was taking me to the occult this is more of a family setup of pastors preachers prophets from all over the world where they come and that is where they get their powers from and the following morning we had to go into this village and when we went into that village that is where i was introduced to what they call the ifa now now ifa is more of a religion in nigeria where they worship Ifa as a god. This is a spirit or a demon, I will call it, that they worship there. Now, when we got there, they, we consulted the Ifa priest. They call them the Ifa priest. Now, the Ifa priest did some incantation and he was able to predict certain things upon my life. And that is why I was convinced and said, this man, he's going to help me. Then from then they did the ritual. They told me that there are things that I must buy. The goat, the, the, the chicken, the fowl and other stuff to, to, to make the covenant. And that is where they took me into the boiling drum where it was on, on, on fire, filled with water to the boiling point. As the steam was going, coming out, I saw the steam. I touched the steam from then they took me and they put me inside that boiling drum but suddenly when I touched the water it was cold they closed it and they did some incantation from then they took me into several gods the god of thunder that is the reason why when people every time they, they, they talk in the church and they, they, they speak about the God of Thunder, you'll hear the prophet shouting the God of Thunder. I, I, I know what they are talking about because this is not the God of heaven. Now, the, the God of Thunder is the one that when you do your, 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 your sacrifice on it, it is where you are saying that everything that your enemy has sent to you, it must go back to thunder, uh, back to sender. So that was the kind of, of ritual where I, I had to do all those things and say back to sender. So every time when you hear such kind of prayers where somebody is shouting and say back to sender, ask yourself where in the Bible which verse in the Bible, which teachings in the Bible does that kind of doctrine stand on? Because the back to sender are usually practiced by occultic people. That was the God of thunder. Then we went to the God of iron. Now when we went to the God of iron, that is where they, they, they sacrificed a, go, a, a, a dog, a dog. That is the reason when I see these people eating dog and I, I, in a church, I know that this is what has been sacrificed to the god of iron. They sacrificed the god of iron with a dog and I had to eat dog by that time. I even wrote about it at uh, this part. Now from then we went to the water uh, spirit where it was a river where I had to take some cowries, some seashells that I had to speak to. The other one I had to carry it wherever I go and put it on my shrine back at home. Now traveling back to South Africa, they said the first thing that I need to do before I go to church, I need to go to the river, the stream river around Soshanguve. That is where the church was. So I had to introduce the spirits from Nigeria with the spirits of the place in the stream. So I went to the stream, I spoke and I said, I want the spirits to help me to fill the church. They gave me also the head of a pig that I had to bury inside the church and we buried it. And guess what? Within, within a period of less than a month, less than a month, we saw a lot of people coming into the church because they told me that when the pig starts to rot, the worms that are coming out of the pigs, the worms that will be, it will be the number of people coming to church. You can ask anybody around social movie, they will tell you that on a Sunday morning, it was traffic going to our church. On the road, you will see people wearing white. It was traffic going to the church. So I knew deep in my heart and said, these people, they are not here for the word of God, but they are here brought by all these kind of powers. Because one of the signs to see if people are not here by the word of God is because they don't need the word of God. They need miracles and prophecy. When you preach the gospel, they sleep. That is the reason why during that time I did not invite any preacher. It was me only. I will make sure that I don't contradict my gospel because my preaching was not about Christ, but my preaching was about miracles and healing. And the moment I stand to say, can I prophesy? Yeah, guess what happens? The whole place shakes. Everybody stands up and say, prophesy. But when you 
teach the word of God, they sleep. But when you say, can I prophesy? They all stand. And because this is what the spirits have brought them to. So don't be fooled when you see crowd people filled in the place. Ask yourself, what are they looking for? Then you will know if they are of God. Because a lot of people feeling the, the, the stadiums, feeling the arena, feeling the overflow, they are there for prophecy and miracles. And the devil can give prophecy. In the book of Acts, you remember about the, the, the young woman who was using the, the python spirit. She was predicting, prophesying, using a wrong spirit. And she came to the apostles and they rebuked him. A lot of Christians are filling the chairs where they are hooked up with spiritual principalities. And this is what I did. And by that time, they told me, you need to stop what you're doing. I had several offices where I was now consulting for people to come and see me. Uh, they had to pay a certain money uh, for consultation. And the reason why they had to pay, it was because the money I will take and I will put it to the altar. That is the reason why you need to be careful where your money, where you take your money to. They will give me money for consultation and I will put it on those gods. Those spirits, they, the man has to sleep there so that the person who has given the money will keep on giving. That is the reason why people who are under occultic, everything they think is to give into that particular uh, church because you are giving to that altar. And I had offices, I was selling oil, I was selling water, I was selling candles, anything that I will think of or anything that I will see in the Bible crossing. If it's oil, I will bring it and bring it as a doctrine. If it was water, I will bring it and bring it as a doctrine. So those were the kind of things that I was doing to, 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 to generate more money. And I remember one day when the policemen came and they said, we are arresting you because of mutilation. Remember, during that time in Soshanguve, there were a lot of cases where uh, people were found who cotton with body parts, all those things. So it was rumored around that area and said there is a man who is strengthening business people, a man who is strengthening other churches because a lot of pastors, they will come for consultation, a lot of traditional doctors, they will come for consultation and I will give them powers. That is true. I've got people that I know their churches stood even today their church are still standing on what I have given to them and immediately I came out others they called me straight and said you don't have to mention our names you don't have to mention our churches but this is the part of my life yes I have given people powers there are people who've got churches because of what I did now the police came on that uh, 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 fateful morning and said are you Makado I said yes and they said, we are arresting you because of uh, mutilation. And they took me with handcuffs. And I remember I went to uh, Soshanguve police station and it was news all over the newspaper. They came, they did some, some, some documentary newspaper, television, they broadcast the story. And when I was uh, inside the cell, I remember very well, they said, we are taking you to Hoshimampuri. You, you, there's no bail for you. And we went to Hoshimampuru. I stayed there for about three months in Hoshimampuru, going trial. In my heart, to be honest with you, I knew I did not do anything like that. And when I was going trial, it was during that time where I had to come back to my senses. I remember one man in the prison, he told me and said, this is not the place for pastors. And that is where he spoke direct into my sense, into my purpose. You know, sometimes God will allow a prisoner to speak freedom to you. This is what happened. He spoke freedom into my spirit because what he said kept on ringing into my heart and said, this is not the life that God has called me for. This is not what uh, I, I was supposed to be. So I remember in prison, you know, there are different churches. You know, we've got different, we've got uh, uh, African initiated churches where you talk of the ZCC, they are there. You talk of the Postolas, they are there. And also Bazalwani Christians are there. I remember I had to go and attend one sermon well, another prisoner was preaching to us. And as he was preaching, I, I raised up my hand and said, I want to accept Jesus Christ once again. And that is where my, my total change began, when a prisoner was giving me freedom. A prisoner can give you freedom. Now, 
uh, I came out and I was acquitted from the case. And what I was acquitted, remember this case, it had a, 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 a community uh, interest. People were marching to the court. When I was attending court, the police, they had to close the road because people, they will come there, will bend tires, will do everything. They will chant my name. Everybody will chant. The people, they know this story. This is what was happening. When I was acquitted from the case, I remember the judge said, we don't see anything, you go. The crowd outside, you can imagine, I had to pass through the crowd. I prayed a prayer, I said, Lord, I need you to protect me. I did not have my car by then, I had to use a taxi. I had to walk through the crowd that was furious, that was angry, shouting my name, shouting my blood, shouting my life. I had to walk there and as I walked, they could not notice me. This is the real miracle I saw. I passed them, they were shouting, Makado, Makad, we want Makad, we want. I passed there, I went and I, I, I hiked for a taxi and I went home. Now, the policeman called me and said, are you at home? I said, yes. And he said to me that you need to be careful because the community, they are now planning to come and, and burn your house. And I remember I called my wife. I was very depressed. I was very down. You, you can imagine I was just out of, out of the cell. I was out of the cell. And I said to my wife, I thought that God has delivered me, but here comes another one and we can't stop this one. The community are coming to burn the house and um, they said they are coming they said they have hired a bus and guess what after an hour i got another call from the same policeman and he said you know what the people they said on their way on mawapana highway the bus that they were using it got a puncture on the way coming to the house the bus got a puncture it did not come up until today then i said lord i thank you for the power of protection upon our lives. Sometimes when we pray, we don't know how God operates, but he does protect us. We might not be able to see the shield that is upon our lives, but there is a shield and angels upon our lives. And that is how I saw the protection of God. Yes, indeed, I traveled to, to Nigeria, as I've said, I've been to Zimbabwe. And you know, once you are introduced into this power, the problem is that you want to be more powerful. You know, power makes you to seek more power. You are not satisfied with what you have. You want to outbeat other prophets in, in Pretoria. You want to outbeat other prophets in your place. And I remember that uh, I wanted to, to increase the power I had. And that is when I was introduced to a man in Zimbabwe. I was told about this man who was able to take things out of the people's body. The GSO all those things i don't believe into those things anymore because I, I know there are no such things where they say that there's a snake living inside of your body i mean we know snakes are in the zoo so your body is not even a zoo how can a snake live in your body now what we used to do during that time because i used to do this thing listen to me very well I used to do this thing very well. I know how it has been done. Number one, the man took me and said, let us go to Zimbabwe where you'll be initiated. Then I said, we go. And then when we went to the Zimbabwe, they told me that uh, you came at the right time. We just had a, a, a funeral because you are going to use the spirit of the dead. You know, these are just demons in different titles and different names. And they said, we are going to use the spirit of the dead. And I said, no, it's fine. And then we, we waited for a midnight and they said, now is the time. You know, these people, when they come, they just tell you to do something. And if you, you decide to stop in the middle of it, they tell you it's either you will be mad, it's either you will lose your sight, it's either something bad will happen. They came in the middle of the night and said, now is the time, let's go. And I stood and said, I'm going. And they said, take off your clothes. I said, what do you mean? Say, undress. And I had to undress. And they gave me a white uh, cloth and we went outside. It was very dark. And when we reached by the graveside, they said, take off your clothes. You have to be naked, naked. I said, you mean I have to take everything? They said, yes. Then I took everything. I was naked, naked. 
Now they said I have to lie down on the grave, naked, naked as I was, and I had to lie down there. And as I lie down, they said now they are connecting me with the spirit of the dead. And I, I, I lie down and they left. And they said, we'll come and take you. You know, I had this fear and say, if the community can just come in and find me in that kind of a city, they will say, yeah, we have found a witch straight. Because you can imagine a naked man, a young man in the grave, a man who is sane, a man who, who, who grew up well. But here you are, a South African national. You can just imagine, where do you come from? I come from South Africa. You don't speak their language. You speak maybe Sut or Venda. So they will think, how did you come here? They will just imagine that maybe you came with a broom or you came with a, a half bread or you know all these stories but that was the situation but suddenly the protection of God was there also nobody came and and up until these guys they came and said now you are strong and from then they gave me a, a a flower and said this flower should put it in my office and I should put some sweets on it and I will pour milk on this flower because it represents the spirit of the, the dead child that I was sleeping on that grave. And sometimes I would, in my house where I, I, I stayed, I had a room where nobody could enter. Now in that room, I would put all these calabashes, all these powers there because of I, I realized that they wanted their own space. Now, sometimes I could hear the sound of a child crying in the house. I mean, not my children because they'll be asleep, but I could hear the sound of a child crying. And I knew those were demonic forces coming from where I took those powers from. So that is what happened. And I, it did not end there. I also went to uh, Mozambique. When I went to Mozambique, I was introduced there by another man as well. And they, they gave me this powers you know you had to give them names so i call them by fire by force you know this were the powers that it's a male and a female they told me that if you take only a male the male will will sleep with your wife if you take a female a female will sleep with you so you have to take them both so and you have to give them names so because of i was using them for a church setup i had to give them a name that is similar to church names so I had to call them by fire by force now they came and when they came I put them inside uh, the office and the night that they came these powers I remember I saw a vision of a short man who said that I must marry a second wife they came in the dream and said that he is looking for a wife a physical wife so I have to marry another wife then I said I call and my father will beat me up you can just imagine going to your father as a Christian PK and say now I want to marry a second wife he will look at you and he will take off the glasses and say what are you trying to say so I, I, I dispute that because remember all this operation I was doing it hiding I did not want people to know I did not want my wife to know did not want my parents to know so those were the kind of, of, of setup during that time my wife she was not aware of this but she was aware of the uh, operation that i was operating because people were coming to take what we call a holy bath you know we'll put uh, some bath there uh, people will come and they take holy bath when they go for interview they take holy bath there when people are looking for like young women and old women who are looking for marriage they're looking for life partners they will come take holy bath there and people they will come and say hey after i've taken the holy bath i see i see change but to be honest with you the question can be will the power work was the power working and i will say to you the power does not work it's your faith the problem is that you, you put your faith on wrong things. So the faith of these people were channeled into wrong things and they thought it was working. The same faith you have, if you put it in God, you will see things happening. And this is uh, what happened in my life. Yes, immediately I, I, I came out of prison, I decided and said, uh, I have to stop this thing because my life was focused on helping people. You know, people will say, but I realized in helping people, I was destroying my life. I was destroying my family. So I decided and said, I'm quitting Utusabat. I get Tusimoto because of Jesus. I went back home and when I was home, I spoke with my parents. 
they've welcomed me and after welcoming me they prayed for me and I took all those things bent them from then I decided and say I'm quitting the ministry because I felt in my heart that I was I was a failure I had failed the gospel I had failed the body of Christ and uh, I, I stayed home with my parents for deliverance and rehabilitation because during that time when I was just seated like this I will hear voices talking to me and you find that I will run back to my father and I will say are you calling me I mean in, in one or in ten minutes I can go into the house three times because I, I used to stay at the, the back rooms at the back. So I would run to the house and say, are you calling me? I would, my father said, no, I'm not calling you. And they realized that I, I needed support. Remember, the person who needs deliverance, do not look at the person as the devil. The person is a victim. Any person who's going through demonic forces, demonic spirits, they need love. Love is the key because the devil will try to bring rejection among those who love you so that the demons can be stronger in destroying your life so the love that i got from my father's house the love i received was the one that embraced me and i went through the prayer they prayed for me the church in libor homo supported me the church in libor homo believed in me every time when i met them they would call me pastor Macad. you know sometimes when you call somebody by their purpose you are reminding them who they are it does not matter what is happening in their life at the moment but they called me with my purpose and as they called me with my purpose, I identified my life with my purpose again. And I arose. And I remember I was so bold enough. And I said, you know what? I am going back. And I wrote back to the Apostolic Faith Mission. And I, I wrote to them and I asked them and said, here I am. I wanted to be uh, accepted once again. And you know the church, they took their time. I think I waited for some time before they responded to me. When they responded, they've referred me to the region where I had to go again under supervision. And I was under their supervision. Dr. TJ Skosana was there. I served under his church, the AFM in Tabatswane. I served there for about a year. And after I have served under his supervision, when he was satisfied that uh, I am okay, and that is when I received a, a call by the church of Subukeng Zone 10, where they have advertised and said they need pastors. And I was one of the pastors who went there, who did interview. They responded and they accepted, uh, they accepted me and they called me to be their presiding pastor. And I started to be their pastor. And I want to thank God for this wonderful church of Subukeng because they they believed and they stood and said we are believing in this man and also i want to appreciate my family my wife who has been supportive and also my 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 firstborn daughter part to chezo and also my son Peño, and also Ino. we are blessed with three beautiful children i want to appreciate them for their love so this is the story of my life today here i am I am an author of a book that is doing wonders. It's a book titled Church Mafia. And we have seen this book uh, reaching almost everywhere in the world. Today as we speak with you, you can be able to buy the book on Amazon and it can be delivered to your door wherever you are. And it does not end there. We have been approached by several companies. They want to publish the book in French. They want to publish the book in Portuguese. This is what we are experiencing daily because of the high demand of this book. Thank you so much for watching this. May God bless you. Hi, my name is Apostle Makado Sintumule Chiruabusiku Charamaburan. Yes, it is true. I have went through the most. I have experienced hell and I have seen the hand of God picking me up. I am the author of a book titled Church Mafia where I am exposing my previous life as an occultic priest who used occultic powers in the house of the Lord. This is the story of my life.